We are having some struggles with the YouTube. Uh, we'll keep working on that if you're trying to get on there. Um, be patient, but if you're able to let people know, like Pastor Mario said, to get over to um, Facebook or, or watch with somebody else, there's probably several people in your house. Um, we're excited for the opportunity. Now, we know tonight, church, that we are in uh, times like we've been talking about that we've never seen before. I, I ministered Sunday on navigating uncertainty. Today we met as pastors in the churches here in VWO Fellowship and just uh, brainstormed and talked about some different things that we're doing, but everybody's having to shift into uh, this uh, online service and we're thankful for um, the media, uh, social media that we have to be able to do that. So everybody that's watching, we just want to say hi tonight and, and bless you in your house. Um, you know, right now we're not going to tell you to give someone a hug or a high five because of what's going on. but. But you look over at them and say, what's up? Amen to that person that's in your house. And um, hopefully, uh, I know we've got quite a few online watching. If you're online tonight and you're watching and you haven't liked it or commented or something to let us know that you're there, please do that. And then also, when this is over, you can share that. And we just want to really take advantage of that. I want to, I want to get into the word tonight that the Lord has put on my heart um, and share kind of going off of Sunday with this uncertainty. We talked about navigating uncertainty, and, and, I, and I gave seven things that are so important for navigating uncertainty. And I'm, I'm going to redo that message probably tomorrow so you know. I'm going to share it on our page, VWO Denton, Texas, and it's going to be available for people to watch. We had some, we're still uh, navigating through a new soundboard and, and some different things, so our podcast is not uh, at where we want it to be right now. We're not able to put every message and then. Uh, we were prepared Sunday the way we needed to be to Facebook Live. So I'm going to do that tomorrow. But one of the things I did not put in that was on purpose because this one needs a whole message. And the title tonight of my message is Praying in the Midst of Uncertainty. Praying in the Midst of Uncertainty. I gave seven things that we could do and I don't want to get back into those during this time. But really, prayer is the glue. Prayer is the glue that holds our faith together. Uh, there was a quote that's so powerful that says, prayer does not prepare us for the greater work. Prayer is the greater work. It's not something that prepares. Sometimes we think, you know, prayer is, is preparing us. Prayer is the greater work. If we're not praying, if we're not seeking the Lord, if we're not uh, having that communication with God and, and speaking these things into existence by faith, then nothing's going to happen. And so tonight, church, we need to understand that right now, more than ever, we have to pray. And, and I was thinking as we were singing, as Pastor Mario was talking, something came to me that's so evident tonight of what we're doing. You know, sometimes when we pray, we think, is God hearing me? And is my prayer going past the roof? Is it getting somewhere? But look at you tonight. You're sitting in different places all over Denton. Crum and Sanger and, and Bridgeport and Corinth and and all these different places around the Metroplex and, and outside of Texas even, watching this, and somehow this transmission is going through a, a cell phone or a camera and is going wherever you're at tonight. And if, if that can happen in social media with the internet, what can happen when we pray? What can happen? And if we had the church here, that would have been a good place to say amen. So say amen in your house. Tell the person next to you, that's the truth right there. Internet can travel and take, take pictures and, and information and all that. And we have the faith. I have faith right now that this is transmitting to you. That I'm not speaking into a camera for, for, for just to waste my time. I have faith that it's getting to your house. And so we have to have that same faith that when I pray, it gets to God. And God listens. And so we have to understand that now when I, when I pray, there's, there's a, a faith coming out of me that says, God, I don't understand what we're going through. There's some real uncertainty right now, but I trust you. And church, we need to understand that as believers, we, we need to be looking at this time not as a time of fear, not as a time of, of distrust, not a as a time of worry. We need to look at, at this as an opportunity to see a move of God. To see a move of God. To see God do stuff 
that we've been praying for and asking for and believing for. And, and we, we have a God who is w more willing to move tonight than we are to even ask. So I want us to understand that we need to, to not see just, just um, uh, great speaking or, or, or any of those things. We need to see God move in a powerful way like he's never moved before. And church, right now, because of what's going on in this uncertain future, we're literally living like in the book of Acts. We're literally living days right now that they lived back then, except they didn't have the technology. They would go from house to house breaking bread and they were under persecution. And right now we're, we're in a place where we're not able to meet together. And so now we can see in the homes and, and in the workplace and on social media things that we would not be able to see without this. And so God's given us an opportunity and we need to believe for this, a visitation of the Holy Spirit. Right now as you're watching, as we feel the presence of God in the church here, we understand that this is just a building. This is not the church. We're the church. And you can feel the Spirit of God right where you are in your house or at your workplace or in your car or wherever you're watching this because God can visit us. And we need to believe for a visitation of the Holy Spirit in power and in might. I want to give you just a few things to think about of why we need to pray. Uh, five things. For, first of all, it strengthens our relationship with Jesus. If, if you have a marriage or a friendship and you're not talking to that person on a daily basis, you're not strengthening that relationship. That relationship becomes estranged and it becomes uh, severed and it becomes divided. And so we have to pray more now than we've ever prayed before. We've got to build that relationship with Jesus so that he's our source. Number two is when we pray, it builds our faith. Prayer builds our faith. It, 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 we, we, we pray and we get an answer. And we see that God heard, and we see that God is able, and so our faith builds. And, and, and listen, I'm hearing stories right now of miracles happening, a uh, situation. God is using these situations for His good, and He is going to see us through. We're going to have a victory tonight, amen, because of it. Another thing that happens when we pray is you get a passion and a, and a, and a desire to reach souls. When you are in prayer, church, when you are spending time with God, and, and I want to mention this, uh, this was mentioned by Corey Tinboom. She said, don't pray when you feel like it. Now, this is someone who, is, who's been, who went through some stuff. She said, don't pray when you feel like it. She said, make an appointment with the Lord and keep it. We need, are we doing that every morning? Are we doing that at night? We, we do it when we come together for church, but... We make it an appointment to get alone with God. A man, she said, is powerful on his knees. A man is powerful on his knees. Another thing that happens when we pray is, is that we get a Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost anger against wickedness. Against things that are not godly. As we pray and we get God's heart, and He gives us a heart for souls and He gives us a heart for the lost. And he gives us a heart for him. We begin to feel his anger towards wickedness. So we have to understand that that comes from prayer. And the last thing is this. Prayer gives us confidence. Prayer gives us confidence. Here's what Hebrews 4 chapter 16 verse 16 says. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may have turned, obtain mercy. So we can come with boldness tonight. We're not praying and hoping that God hears us. We're praying and believing that God is hearing us. And it says, and we can find grace in time of need. What do we need to be doing right now in these uncertain times? We need to be praying. We need to be seeking God's face. We need to be uh, fine-tuning our relationship with the Lord. And I want to mention this. This is, a very, this is very important. There's nothing wrong with us talking to each other, encouraging each other, uh, sharing our thoughts, sharing our ideas, sharing our worries. That's okay, especially if it's people of confidence, especially if it's people in our, in our fellowship of, of the body of Christ where we know they have the same heart as us. But listen, we need to be careful what we're listening to, what we're hearing, the voices that we're hearing, the things that are being spoken to us because we have to understand that God will speak to us and He'll give us His direction. And His direction is never going to be motivated by fear. His direction is going to be motivated by the boldness of the Holy Spirit to look the devil in the eyes 
and say, no, devil. We're not going to lose this battle. We're going to win this battle. Amen. Tell someone right there in that house with you, we're going to win this battle. We're going to win this battle. It's already fixed. It's a fixed fight. We cannot lose tonight. Amen. And so the Bible says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. That's a powerful promise from God. And we've been talking about the promises of God. And as everybody in the world is going crazy right now and acting crazy and fearing and, and wondering and, 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 and with, with due reason, we don't know what tomorrow holds. Literally, we're, we're in a place we've never been before. But we don't have to be fearful because we know that God is listening to our prayers. The next part of that verse in verse 15 says, now God says, he says, so here's the if, if my people will pray, if my people will humble themselves and seek my face, Turn from their wicked ways. How many believe tonight that God can use this virus and this situation to cause people to turn from their wicked ways? It's kind of like a funeral. The funeral we were at yesterday for Emmanuel. When you're at a funeral, all of a sudden you think about death like you've never thought before. So this virus has people thinking about death and sickness and what if and all these different things. And if that's what God has to use to get people's attention, then let it be. But I don't want to be that person that has to have stuff like that happen to me to get my attention. I want to be able to, to say, God, I'm, I'm going to clean myself right now without having a virus around. I'm going to, uh, me and Carla were talking about this today. It, it's like when we're uh, uh, right now with everybody cleaning everything, we should be cleaning our hearts. We should be cleaning our souls, our spirits, our minds, and making sure that this, this, the, 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 the thoughts of this world and the forces of darkness are not hindering what God wants to do. So he says, if you'll do those things, I'll forgive your sin and I'll hear your land. And it says, now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to your prayer made in this place. That's a great promise. He says, if you'll do your part, I'll do my, my part. God will answer our prayers. A great song, as I, as I begin to uh, close tonight, a great song in 107 verses 28 to 30 says, They cry out to the Lord in their trouble. What should, who should we be crying out to right now? To the, to the government, to, to friends, to family, or should we be crying out to the one who can fix it? The one who's in control. It says, They cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and He brings them out of their distresses. And I love this next part. You know, we're right here in Denton. Right now, we're in the middle of a whole bunch of rain. Matter of fact, I think it's raining right now. And it rained really hard last night. And we had thunder and lightning. And there's a tornado watch in the area. And, 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 and so rain, it's raining right now. And, and, and there's a storm. And, but this morning, it rained all night last night. Thunder and lightning. And we woke up this morning and the sun came out. The, the, this, this too shall pass. The storm will pass. And the good news is that the sun comes back out again. And it says, He calms the storm. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. So they are glad because they are quiet. So it says, then they are glad because they're quiet. And He guides them to their desired haven. God, God has a purpose and a plan for us. As we're in this time of uncertainty, church, we just keep saying, God, I, I don't understand, but I, I trust you. And the way we do that is in prayer. Lord, I, I, we walk around all over the place. We don't have to be in a church service. We don't have to be with other people. Lord, I thank you. We lift our hands. We can walk through the house. We can be in our car. We can say, Lord, I thank you that you're in control of everything right now. You are on the throne. You're bigger than all these situations that we're going through. John Bunyan, who was a great missionary, said, Prayer is a shield to the soul. A shield to the soul. A sacrifice to God. And it damages Satan. How many watching in your houses tonight want to do damage to Satan? How many want to get back at the things he stole from you? How many want to get back at him for the things he's done to you? Or the things he's taken from you? If you want to get back at Satan, pray. 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 Seek the Lord's face. I was thinking about um, how much one person, now as I'm closing, listen to this, as one, one person can make a difference. 
in the kingdom of God. One person. One person. Sometimes we think, man, I, we, need, we need a bunch of people. My pastor used to tell us, a one man is an army with God. So if, if, if there's five of you or ten of you in your house tonight, there's an army sitting in that house right now. There, there's a powerful force of people because one person can make a difference. James 5.16 says, The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man. It does not say of a bunch of men. It says of a righteous man avails much. The effectual, fervent prayer of one person does a lot. So who's going to be that one person tonight? Is it, is it going to be the person next to you? Is it going to be somebody else? Or is it going to be you? I say, Lord, let it be me tonight. I'm going to be the person who's going to avail much. I'm going to be that person who's, who's got an effective prayer life. I can take authority over my fear. I can take authority over my doubts. I can take authority over the situations in my mind. And, and, and as you're in those homes, this is what's exciting right now. We'd rather be together. We'd rather all be here like we usually are on a Wednesday night and kids in children's church and us here with people on our left and our right praising and worshiping together. But here we are in homes and something very powerful happens when we gather together. And I was thinking about the book of Acts chapter 4 and verses 29 to 31 says they, they were looking at the threats. It says, Lord, look on their threats. Now we're, we're, we're fighting an enemy tonight that we don't see at the moment. It's an invisible enemy. We don't know who it is or everybody's got their thoughts. But the bottom line is it's, it's the devil at the core of it. But as he said, look, look on their threats. And so we say, Lord, look on the threat tonight of what's causing us to not have what we need to have or do what we want to do. He says, grant to your servants. This is a prayer we should do. That with all boldness, we would speak your word. How many want more boldness tonight? Speak his word. It says, by stretching out your hand to heal, that signs and wonders would be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. We've been saying for years, true revival would be when, when revival broke out in the homes, in the workplace, where you wouldn't have to say, let me take you to my church so they can pray for you, but you lay your hands on them and you pray for them. You speak Jesus' word and Jesus' name to that sickness right now, to that disease right now, to that situation right now, and boldly speak it and God will do something. It says, and when they had prayed, when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Shaken. How, how many believe that God can shake us tonight? Amen? In a good way. He can shake the walls of that house you're in. He can shake the walls of that marriage that needs to be fixed. He can shake the walls of that demonic force that's fighting you. And it says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began to speak the word of God with boldness. Church, every time we see in the Bible where they pray, good things happen. Every time a man or a woman or a group got together and prayed, something happened. So, as we start this tonight, we're going online right now, and again, we don't know when. We don't have a date yet of when we're going to be able to gather together. We believe by faith we're going to be able to gather together soon. But in this time right now, here's what we need to do. More than anything else, we need to pray. We need to be a people of prayer. Not just in, in, as a church body here, but around the world, we need to pray. We need to seek the Lord's face because prayer is our greatest weapon. It's the weapon, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not physical. They're not a virus. They're not a physical ailment. They're not carnal, it says, the, but they're, 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 they come down by the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through the pulling down of strongholds. How does that happen? Not physically. It happens in prayer. The last verse I want to read is in Psalms 126. Five to six. How many like promises? Tell someone in your house or around you, look at them and say, how many like promises tonight? As you're, as you're thinking about this right now, promises. I, I love God's promises. And, and this is another thing that you can focus on right now. How many realize you might have a little more time than you normally do? You're, you're not going to go home tonight and watch sports. You're not going to go home tonight or be home and, 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 and they're, they're, maybe you're working from home. and you got some more time on you. 
So read God's word and go and start beginning to look at his promises. Start looking at what he says in his word about how he'll heal your disease. How he'll, he'll break, give you a breakthrough financially. How he'll change your circumstance and your situation. And, and here's the promise. Psalms 1, 26, 5 to 6, as the musicians begin to come tonight and we begin to close. He says, those who sow in tears. Listen, stay with me. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Can I read that again to you? Some of you watching, somebody you, some of you in your house, some here, uh, you, you have been going through it. Some things have been happening. Some situations have, have been hard. There's been some tears. It says those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Hallelujah. Amen. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. We still on? We still good? All right. They made me scared for a second there. Just bow your heads and close your eyes at your house. Just, just, obviously don't grab somebody's hand. Amen. Just bow your heads. Close your eyes. Keep that distance. But God is speaking to us tonight, church. He's challenging us to seek his face. As I was seeking his face and praying and asking God, what should I speak tonight? It was very clear. Prayer. Prayer. My people will humble themselves and pray. I've never met somebody in my life that said, you know what, I prayed too much for that situation. But I've met many people, and I've been that person myself that says, I could have prayed more. I could have done more. And the bottom line is, church, there's a lot of times in our life that we can't do anything physically. We don't have the answer financially. We don't have the answer in any other way than say, God, I need you to move. I need you to move, God. I need you to do something only you can do, God. I'm going to humble myself tonight, Lord. I'm going to pray. I'm going to sow in tears because I know that your word cannot lie. And fathers, we're here closing this service on this Wednesday night, and you are allowing us to be in homes all over the Metroplex through this. And many other churches are having the same opportunity tonight. We thank you that the power of prayer can move in lives greater than the waves of the internet. That you're doing a great work in our lives. As your heads are bowed and eyes are closed, we're going to give everyone an opportunity to not make sure that they know the Lord. But I want to read something right before I do that. As your heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Charles Spurgeon said this. Because this is what it comes down to. Why do we pray? Why do we need to seek God's face? Because there are people tonight going to hell. People passing into eternity. We, we talk about this virus. We talk about this sickness. And whatever it is and whatever it comes, the bottom line is there's a virus spreading through humanity. It's sin. It's rebellion. And so there's people tonight in your neighborhood. There's people tonight in your family. There's people tonight at your workplace. Do not know Jesus Christ. Charles Spurgeon said, If sinners be damned, at least let them leap to hell over our bodies. If they will perish, let them perish with our arms about their knees. Let no one go there unwarned and unprayed for. Can I read that again one more time? What a powerful quote that is. This should be our mentality. If someone's going to go to hell, they're not going to go to hell because I didn't pray for them. If someone's going to go to hell, they're not going to go to hell because I didn't warn them. He said, if sinners are going to be damned, let them leap to hell over our bodies. If they're going to perish, let them perish with our arms about their knees. Let no one go there unwarned and unprayed for. There's a, there's a, there's a harvest, church. Listen closely. There's a harvest. There is a harvest out there right now. People are seeking hope. They need hope. They need they need they don't need someone to tell them you're gonna die of a virus. They need someone to tell them someone already died for the virus. That's Jesus. He 
died already. He paid the price. Tonight we're in this place. I have a peace and a joy that I can't even explain that money cannot buy because I know that my life is in God's hands. That I'm not good enough. If I start to think about my goodness, if I start to think about what I can do, I'm lost. I would be very afraid, afraid and very scared. But I'm not tonight because I know who has my life in their hands and Jesus paid his price for me. And so with your heads bowed and eyes closed, I want to ask you as you're watching, you might lift your hand in your living room because maybe you're a neighbor that was invited. Maybe maybe you're watching this by yourself. Maybe you're, you're, you're in, in, a, in, a, in a living room with somebody tonight and you might lift your hand and they'll pray with you tonight and they're, they're going to rejoice for this. But if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to pray with you right now. And I want you to put your faith, not in a man, not in a government, but in God who so loved this world that He gave His only Son that whoever would perish, will not, whoever would put their faith will not perish, but have everlasting life. Tonight you can do that. If you're in your house and you're around there, just lift your hand. No one has to see it but you and God. Say, God, I need, I need that tonight. I'm, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. You might be watching this saved later, tomorrow, at another date. The Bible says today is the acceptable day of the Lord. Today is the day of salvation. We're going to say a prayer that's straight out of the Bible. And you're going to admit that you're a sinner and you're going to be forgiven. Say this with me, Lord Jesus. Tonight I come into your presence. And I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. But you're a great God. And tonight I ask you to forgive me for all my sins. Wash me clean with your precious blood that you shed on the cross. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And I believe you rose from the dead. And I ask you tonight to put my name in the Lamb's book of life. Because there is an eternity. There is a forever. And I want to spend it with you, Lord. Change my life tonight. Cleanse me tonight. Wash me clean. Make me a new creation. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father. We're going to begin to sing a song to close tonight. You can sing with us, but right before we do, I want to pray. Pastor Mario opened the service in prayer. We prayed for this service. We prayed for this message, but I want to pray again. And, and in your house, you can just, you know, we, we don't, I know some people are, are never going to lift their voice. You don't have to shout, but let's pray. Let's lift our voices in our homes. Let's pray out loud. Let's not be ashamed. Let's be bold. And let's take this word tonight and, and put it into practice and pray for your family members. Let's pray for our, our, our president. Let's pray for our, our leaders. Let's pray for the worldwide leaders. Let's pray for all these situations. And, and, and our prayer should simply be this. God, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we come before you tonight and we pray. And we pray against disease and we pray against sickness and we bind every spirit of the enemy. We bind the spirit of witchcraft and sorcery and divination. And we know that there's a spirit of antichrist that wants to come against the work of Jesus tonight. And we bind that in the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, that this is going to be the greatest harvest we've ever seen. Father, across the nation and across the globe, people are going to fall on their knees and say, Lord, I need a Savior. I'm sorry. I, I don't want. I don't want to be rebellious anymore. I don't want to. I don't want to live in this sin life anymore. I'm not happy like this. And they're going to turn their eyes upon Jesus, the Author and the Finisher of their faith, Father. And we just take authority over the rebellion. We take authority over the doubts. Father, we speak life over our neighbor, over our coworker, over our families and members that are lost. We bind the spirit of of wickedness tonight. We bind the spirit of perversion. Father, we bind the spirit of violence and anger and fear. And Father, we thank you that tonight, God, one man is an army with God, but two can put 10,000 to flight. If we'll join together, Lord, and as we're praying, Father, I know that in the homes right now, your presence is falling. Lord, the, the walls are shaking. They might not be shaking physically, but they're shaking spiritually tonight, God. And Lord, right now, there's some alcoholics being set free. 
There's some drug addicts being set free right now. Father, as people are watching, there's a, a spirit of heaviness being lifted off of them right now as they watch. And Lord, there's a freedom coming into their hearts. And, the, and Lord, that burden that they've been bearing is leaving them right now. It's gone. In Jesus' name, the word says, God, you send your word by your stripes. We are healed. We bind cancer. Father, we bind the spirit of disease. And Lord, we thank you that you're touching Emily tonight and healing her body completely. Healing a cake's father completely. As Pastor Mario prayed, it is done tonight. And Lord, we declare that no weapon formed against us can prosper in Jesus' name. Father, thank you for moving across this great city of Dallas and Denton and these areas and across the world tonight. And we give you the glory. And as we begin to sing this song to close now, well, now we thank you. Now we praise you. Now we worship you. Now we lift our voices and we exalt you tonight. Let's begin to sing that tonight as we do. Sing with us in your house as we begin to close this. But sing it with boldness and sing it with faith and sing it with thanksgiving tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
church as we close tonight. Uh, hang out a little bit. Uh, let us know on Facebook there. If YouTube began to work, let us know. Give us a thumbs up. Say something there. Share that. Let people know about it. Uh, again, tomorrow, at some point, I'm going to be putting up Sunday's message. I'm going to do it from my house, and that'll be there also very soon, maybe tomorrow. I don't know when. In the next few days, we're going to uh, open up a forum as well to talk about some end times things just to see what's going on prophetically in the world. We want to take advantage of, of this opportunity with the social media to be able to uh, reach as many people as we can. There's a lot of people that have questions tonight, and we want to be the answer through the Bible. And so uh, be encouraged tonight. Uh, let us know. Maybe send us some texts uh, in the group meetings, different things. Tell us how it went and share your testimonies. And we'll be using social media to uh, share uh, more about Sunday. Sunday we'll be having a service at 11 a.m. Uh, just like this. And so be tuning in. Be telling people about that. We'll be working to get it even better. But God bless you tonight. Love on somebody. And uh, Jesus could come tonight. So let's be ready. Amen. Praise God. God bless you.